Hey everybody, I'm Jared with Get Voip, and on today's episode, we're going to be taking a dive into the topic of SLA. Now, you've probably heard the term SLA loosely thrown around in some of the articles, as well as other publications across the internet. Whether it's CPAS or SAS, companies have high expectations on the services and features they want to get for their money. The best way to ensure the providers deliver on all their promises is by creating an SLA, a service level agreement. Now, it's exactly what it sounds like, an agreement covering the level of services to be delivered. Now, some people confuse SLAs with vendor contracts since they both outline the goods and services to be delivered. However, there are a few key differences. In addition to listing the deliverables and the steps required to fulfill expectations, SLAs also cover the general standards of the service that need to be maintained for the full term of the agreement. Furthermore, SLAs lay out the penalties set to occur if the agreed upon standards aren't maintained. They can essentially plot the series of actions that would happen in a worst case scenario where the provider was unable to deliver at the level they had promised. One popular example of an SLA in the VoIP world is Vonage's guarantee to provide 99.9 .9 service uptime. Now, this isn't just marketing buzz. The company takes its guarantee seriously enough to put it in the SLA. Now, if the uptime drops to 97% or less, the SLA states that the customer's payment will be reduced by 5%. Arrangements like these keep service providers accountable, increasing the odds that they'll deliver on their promises instead of overestimating their capabilities and undelivering in the name of boosting sales. Now, there are three main types of SLAs. You have service-based SLAs, customer-based SLAs, and multi-level SLAs. Now, a service-based SLA is the simplest form of agreement. This type of SLA guarantees that any end user who signs it will receive an equal level of service regardless of the department, company, or role. Customer-based SLAs are an agreement between a single company and the provider. It outlines all the services to be received from one party to the other. In the context of a virtual phone provider, services like SMS messaging, video calling, and voice calling may be bundled. Rather than have a separate contract for each of the three services, the entire bundle is defined in a single agreement for the sake of simplicity. Finally, multi-level SLAs are the third and most customizable agreement type. The first layer covers services at the corporate level. You'll rarely see them get updated since the provided standards in this niche don't often change. The customer level is a multi-level SLA that will cover services on a customer-to-customer -customer basis. For instance, the service level needed for the IT department will be different than what's needed from the sales department, even though they're both in the same company. The service layer of the multi-level The service layer of the multi-level SLA defines all services provided to the company as a whole. This ensures that fundamental aspects such as a customer support line are accessible to all employees regardless of their department. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit the notification bell below so you don't miss out on the next videos that seek to simplify the VoIP world. Also, feel free to share this explanation on social media so your friends can learn about SLAs and how important they are. Until next time, this is Jared with Get VoIP. Take it easy, everybody.